Hello and welcome to the Bible with Briscoe 2021. I am your messenger of the Word of God, Shenandoah Briscoe, and today we're going to be reading Leviticus 14 and Matthew 26, 51 through 75. Father, I just ask for clarity of voice so that the reading of your word will be a blessing to you and for all of those who have tuned in from all around the world. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. And they all said, Amen. Cleansing from defiling skin diseases. Leviticus 14. The Lord said to Moses, These are the regulations for any diseased person at the time of their ceremonially cleansing. When they are brought to the priest, the priest is to go outside the camp and examine them. If they have been healed of their defiling skin disease, the priest shall order that two live clean birds and some cedar wood, scarlet yarn, and hyssop be brought for the person to be cleansed. Then the priest shall order that one of the birds be killed over fresh water in a clay pot. He is to then take the live bird and dip it together with the cedar wood, the scarlet yarn, and the hyssop into the blood of the bird that was killed over the fresh water. Seven times he shall sprinkle the one to be cleansed of the defiling disease and then pronounce them clean. After that, he is to release the live bird in the open fields. The person to be cleansed must wash their clothes, shave off all the hair, and bathe with water. Then they will be ceremonially clean. After this, they may come into the camp, but they must stay outside their tent for seven days. On the seventh day, they must shave off all the ha their hair. They must shave their heads, their beards, their eyebrows, and the ch rest of the hair on their bodies. They may must wash their clothes and bathe themselves with water, and they will be clean. On the eighth day, they must bring two male lambs and one ewe lamb, a year old each without defect, along with three tenths of an apple of the finest flour mixed with olive oil for a grain offering and one log of oil. The priest who pronounces them clean shall present both the one to be cleansed and their offerings before the Lord at the entrance to the tent of meeting. Then the priest is to take one of the male lambs and offer it as a guilt offering, along with the log of oil. He shall wave them both before the Lord as a wave offering. He is to slaughter the lamb in the sanctuary area where the sin offering and the burnt offering are slaughtered. Like the sin offering, the guilt offering belongs to the priest. It is most holy. The priest is to take some of the blood of the guilt offering and put it on the lobe of the right ear of the one to be cleansed, on the thumb of the right hand, and on the big toe of their right foot. The priest shall then take some of the log oil, log of oil, pour it into the palm of his left hand, dip his right forefinger into the oil in his palm, and with his finger sprinkle some of it before the Lord seven times. The priest is to put some of the oil remaining in his palm on the lobe of the right ear of the one to be cleansed, on the thumb of the right hand, and on the big toe of their right foot, on top of the blood of the guilt offering. The rest of the oil in his palm to the priest shall put on the head of the one to be cleansed and make atonement for them before the Lord. Then the priest is to sacrifice the sin offering and make atonement for the one to be cleansed from their uncleanliness. After that, the priest shall slaughter the burnt offering and offer it 
on the altar together with the grain offering and make atonement for them and they will be clean. If, however, they are poor and cannot afford these, they must take one male lamb as a guilt offering and to be waived to make atonement for them, together with a tenth of an ephel of the finest flour mixed with olive oil for a grain offering, a log of oil, and two doves or two young pigeons, such as they can afford, one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering. On the eighth day they must bring them for their cleansing to the priest at the entrance to the tent of meeting before the Lord. The priest is to take the lamb for the guilt offering together with the log of oil and wave them before the Lord as a wave offering. He shall slaughter the lamb for the guilt offering and take some of its blood and pour it on the lobe of the right ear of the one to be cleansed, on the thumb of the right hand, and on the big toe of their right foot. The priest is to pour some of the oil into the palm of his own left hand, and with his right forefinger sprinkle some of the oil from his palm seven times before the Lord. Some of the oil in his palm is to be put on the same places he put the blood of the guilt offering, on the lobe of the right ear, on the, of the one to be cleansed, on the thumb of their right hand, and on the big toe of their right foot. The rest of the oil in his palm the priest shall put on the head of the one to be cleansed, to make atonement for them before the Lord, and then he shall sacrifice the doves or the young per pigeons, such as the person can afford, one as a sin offering, the other as a burnt offering, together with the grain offering. In this way the priest will make atonement before the Lord on behalf of the one to be cleansed. These are the regulations for anyone who has a defiling skin disease and who cannot afford the regular offering for their cleansing. Cleansing from Defiling Molds The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, When you enter the land of Canaan, which I am giving you as your possession, and I put a spreading mold in a house in that land, the owner of the house must go to and tell the priest, I have some seen something that looks like a defiling mold in my house. The priest is to order the house to be emptied before he goes in to examine the mold, so that nothing in the house will be pronounced unclean. After this, the priest is to go in and inspect the house. He is to examine the mold on the walls, and if he and if it has a greenish or reddish depression that appears to be deeper than the surface of the wall, the priest shall go out to the doorway of the house and close it up for seven days. On the seventh day, the priest shall return to inspect the house. If the mold has spread on the walls, he is to order that the contaminated stones be torn out and thrown into an unclean place outside the town. He must have all the inside walls of the house scraped and the material that is scraped off dumped into an unclean place outside the town. And then they are to take on other stones to replace these and take new clay and plaster the house. If the defiling mold reappears in the house after the stones have been torn out and the, and the house scraped and plastered, the priest is to go and examine it, and if the mold has spread in the house, it is a persistent defiling mold. The house is unclean. It must be torn down. Its stones, timbers, and all the plaster and taken out of the town to a clean, unclean place. Anyone who gives in to 
Anyone who goes into the house while it is closed will be unclean till evening. Anyone who sleeps or eats in the house must wash their clothes. But if the priest comes to examine it and the mold has not spread after the house has been plastered, he shall pronounce the house clean because the devouring mold is gone. To purify the house, he is to take two birds and some cedar wood, scarlet yarn, and hyssop. He shall kill one of the birds over fresh water in a clay pot. Then he is to take the cedar wood, the hyssop, the scarlet yarn, and the live bird, dip them into the blood of the dead bird and the fresh water, and sprinkle the house seven times. He shall purify the house with the bird's blood, the fresh water, the live bird and cedar wood, the hyssop and the scarlet yarn. Then he is to release the live bird in the open field outside the town. In this way, he will make atonement for the house, and it will be clean. These are the regulations for any defiling skin disease, for a sore, for defiling molds and fabric in a house, and for swelling a rash or any shiny spot, to determine when something is clean or unclean. These are the regulations for defiling skin diseases and defiling molds. Okay, that was Leviticus 14. Now we're going to turn to Matthew 26, 51 through 75. Okay, here we go, 51. With that one, with that one of Jesus' companions reached for his sword, drew it out, and struck the servant on the high, of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Put your sword back in its place, Jesus said to him, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think I cannot call on my father, and he will at once put a, at my disposal more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that say, I must happen, it must happen in this way. In that hour, <clears throat> in that hour, Jesus said to the crowd, I am leading a rebellion that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me. Every day I sat in the temple courts teaching and you did not arrest me. But this has all taken place that the writings of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Jesus before the Sanhedrin. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Cephas, the high priest, where the teachers of the law and the elders had assembled, but Peter followed him at the distance, right up to the courtyard of the high priests. He entered and sat down with the guards to see the outcome. The chief priests at, and the whole Sheridan were looking for false evidence against Jesus, so that they could put him to death, but they did not find any though many false witnesses claimed forward. Finally, two came forward and declared, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. Then the high priest stood up and said to Jesus, Are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent. The high priest said to them, To him I charge you under oath by the living God, Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. You have said so, Jesus replied. But I say to you, all of you, From now on you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One 
and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has spoken blasphemy. Why do we need any more witnesses? Look now, you have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? He is worthy of death, they answered. Then they spit in his face and, and struck him with their fists. Others slapped him and said, Prophesy to us, Messiah, who hit you? And Peter disowned Jesus. Now Peter was sitting out in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him. You also were with Jesus of Galilee, she said. But he denied it before them all. I do not know what you are talking about, he said. Then he went out to the gateway, where another servant girl saw him, and said to him, and the people, this fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. He denied it again with an oath, I do not know that man. And after a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, Surely you are one of them. You, your ancient accent gives you away. Then he began to calm down curses, and, and he swore to them, I do not know the man. Then he began to call down curses and swore to them, I do not know the man. Immediately, a rooster crowed. Then Peter remembered the words of Jesus had spoken, Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. Okay, that was... Matthew twenty six fifty one through seventy five. Father, I just thank you for your word, because without your word I cannot be your messenger of the word. Thank you, Father, that my reading gets better, that my articulation gets better, so that the reading of your word will be more of a blessing to those who tune in from all around the world. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. And they all said, Amen. Okay, that's it for today. Tomorrow we will be reading Leviticus 15 through 16 and Matthew 27, 1 through 26. Thank you folks for tuning in to the Bible with Briscoe 2021. I have enjoyed being your messenger of the Word of God, Shenandoah Briscoe. And as always, you know, God loves you and so do I. So come back to see us tomorrow because, well, hey, we'll be here and I hope that you are too.